Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Should you be thinking about crazy ideas like that, or should, be, or should you be thinking about powering your car from your house? So I'm in the process of planning on, uh, uh, I'm in the planning process of building a house right now. And one of the things that you can do, even in this area, is build a net zero house where you've got geothermal for your heat and you've got solar that's powering the geothermal and you can actually sell electricity back right. to the grid. Right. And so are we, instead of thinking about putting wind turbines turbines on our cars, should we be thinking about making our houses but, but more, we, more energy but, efficient but, so we can but, but power our cars from our houses? The, the wind turbine will create dra additional drag faster than it creates yeah. sure. electricity. Right. So, yeah, I mean, so that's why that's whole Right, right, power. that's ridiculous, right. But I, what, I guess what I'm saying is, when, when, I see, when, when I see all of the interesting things that people are doing to, to, to heat their houses, I mean, I like, keep, yeah. I like keeping my place at 75 degrees, even in the winter. Yeah. And in Seattle, 75 degrees yeah. in the winter is a you know six six seven eight hundred dollar heating. Bill. That's a luxury. <laughs> it's a lot, exactly. But when you've got geothermal powered by solar, you can keep it at 75. You're not paying anything. Right. And, and, so, the, and the, that's clearly the way to go. And and now you've got your Chevrolet Volt sitting outside with its photovoltaic roof, mm -hmm. so that it's maintaining a charge. And um, one of the things we're actually looking at is programming the Volt with the local schedule of when power is cheapest. Uh, the car's computer knows that, and even when you have it plugged in, it will only charge nice. when the power is at its absolute minimum cost. And then if you're on vacation, there's the possibility that you could, when your Volt is in the garage, to where it charges on off-peak, very cheap energy, and sells back to the grid during the daytime, so 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 well, so that so your car could make you uh, money. Yeah. No, that a, a fleet, a fleet, a large <laughs> fleet of Chevrolet Volts <laughs> become <laughs> an electricity <laughs> capacitance <laughs> reservoir, <laughs> where they soak up energy during the off-peak hours and help accommodate the the peak during the day. That's great. How many are you going to sell during the first year? I, I think the first full year of production will be 2011, and, and uh, the plan is to, you know, do as many as we can. But realistically, that'll probably be about 10,000, and then as we hit the second year, we'll be up to 60,000, and from then on, nobody knows. It, it, if it's sold out the world over, we will obviously add capacity as quickly as we can. And as we alluded to earlier, there will be. Uh, other brands and other body styles using the same, uh, using very similar componentry. Well, that brings up a very Wait, interesting. Let, let me just clear something oh, before you do it. When we say a year, we're talking 12 months. Right. We're right. not talking During about January yeah. to yeah. December. We're talking. Still coming out till November. Yeah. yeah. But in in 2011, it'll be very close. To it'll be very close to a calendar year. Because, yeah. because we'll we'll. We'll launch production sort of in November 2010. 2010. We won't really yep. build that many in 2010. So, so it's really the calendar 2011. year 11 will be the first big year of full production. Yes. And then the question is, how fast can we ramp up? Uh, will we have any production problems? Will we have any supply problems? Will, will some supplier let us down? As we the answer is always yes. They're going to have some problems somewhere. Oh, so. no. Be a Buddhist. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm Jewish, and there is always a problem somewhere. No. <laughs> I mean, 60,000 isn't very many vehicles. I mean, they sell 150,000. You're so right. Nothing compared to what they used to sell. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think it's a conservative figure, but we need better to some experience with our technology. And let's face it, the early ones are going to be pretty expensive. Yeah. Are we still thinking mid thirties? No, I think we're 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 figuring like right now it looks just below forty. And with if we get government incentives, that might bring it down into the mid thirties. But all of the market research we've done, predominantly on the West Coast, is we've been indicating that it would be around 40 and um, but the really demand is still enormously high well if you can sell suburbans in the, in the yes. you know above the price of a corvette you know the standard corvette you can sell volts in yeah. the forty thousand dollars I, I really need to ask you about because this speaking about corvettes and being a corvette owner has had like many or maybe most corvette owners Everybody tends to say that they love their cars, they hate the ownership experience because Chevy dealers 
if, <laughs> if they have a Corvette expert, their Corvette expert is in name only and service is an absolute nightmare. What are you doing to ensure that the quality of the car is not let down by poorly trained dealers, dealers who are not set up to... Are you talking about the Volt? Yeah, to, yeah, to, to, okay. to, to, the vault, to, to, to service the Volt. Because it is a completely different monster. Uh, and you know, when the Corvette people say, look, I'm being treated like I own a Cavalier and getting the same level of service, that's a huge deal at a, at a you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar car. That's a that's a slightly different monster at a forty thousand dollars. And if you're talking building a Cadillac, it may be a eighty or ninety thousand dollar car. You're still getting the same you know Chevy Cadillac dealers. What are you going to do to ensure that uh, those those well, they're not let down with an entirely different monster? Yeah. Okay. I mean, let's let's face it. Uh, we can't. We we only have a relatively modest amount of control over the retail level. We can't coerce them. We can't pull the franchise. I mean, our our leverage is relatively limited because there is no such thing as factory to use selling. Sure. And, and dealers are a bell-shaped curve. I think most of them are okay in the middle, and then there's a tail at one end that is super outstanding right. and exemplary and there's a tail at the other end which is which is lousy the, the dealers that i've gone to <laughs> uh, you've probably been unlucky but i i mean it's a mixed bag and and we we can't even we, we uh we're despondent over failed efforts to get some sort of standardized uh method of treating customers or standardized uh dealer ethics but basically, every dealer is his or her sure. own entrepreneur, and they'll run it the way they see fit. But, but in terms, of, I'm sorry to, to cut you off, but just, a, just and, to by the way, this is a this is a problem that's rampant throughout the industry. It's right, not it's specific to general. It's orders. yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I've had you know, I've I've had Fords, I've had I've had all kinds Shame of cars. Shame on you! Uh, it was the worst car I ever owned. <laughs> Okay. Quite honestly. What was it? I, I, had an, I had a 98 Expedition. It was actually given to me. That's the only reason. And it was the worst vehicle I've ever owned. Was uh, it the Eddie Bauer edition? It was not. <laughs> well, uh, that, that's that's not right. If, if only it had been Eddie Bauer. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Eddie Bauer makes all the difference. Yeah. Does, but I can yeah. tell you that. It blows that, bubbles out the tailpipe. It plays <laughs> daisies. Uh, it skis. In terms of, I, I understand that, you know, no. there are laws in, in place, you know, factory. State by state. State by state. But if you say go to, you know, BMW dealerships, and I've never actually understood this, but Jaguar gets really high ratings, but I've found Jaguar not not just not just personally, but personally and by other market research data to be pretty miserable dealerships. But BMW tends to send up as way more organized, better customer satisfaction. Yes, it's a higher price point, but it's from service standpoint that they, you know, that the training, uh, and it may just be a factor they don't have as many cars to do, but they actually do have a fair a number, of, fair number of cars and technology and engines. The money those guys are breaking in on, I mean, just the parts on this car. Yeah, but they also have to, they all, most of those parts are, are sourced from other places as well. So right, guys, but we're a little bit outside my area here. <laughs> okay, oh, that's fine. My, my background is sales and marketing, yeah. but I haven't that's practiced it for true. about 20 years. So. <laughs> but, and uh, the fact that I don't know it, but that I don't know about something usually does not inhibit me from commenting on it. Yeah, but but one, one question related to this, though, is kind of one of the conspiracy theories in the in that movie that uh, the, who killed the electric car yeah. was that the dealers killed it because they weren't making any money off of service. Oliver Stone does not live at this address. But, but, <laughs> but in any case, is there a, is what are the dealers going to get to do with the bolt? Well, what kind of servicing are they going to get? Yeah. To get well, first of all, there's going to be that. That's a good question, but uh, yeah, you can give me a little But as the um, there's going to be tires, there's going to be brakes. Even though brakes probably relatively modest because of regen braking, but there's going to be service required for the gearbox. The uh, the piston engine is going to require service, mm -hmm. and um, very important. We've got to call people into the dealership about every three months to uh, clean out that gas tank or replace the fuel because otherwise the, <laughs> if they never, so 
Especially, especially in California with the oxygenated fuel.